Our Mac 2015 Ferrari FF in all her glory. What did you think of it? I love this car. I mean, this is, uh, this is a proper daily driver. It's four wheel drive, 650 horsepower V12, 210 mile an hour SUV. It's got four seats, it's versatile. I took cargo this morning to the racetrack. We're racing at Belle Isle this weekend. I had helmets and boxes in the back. It's a great, great daily driver. Well, Townsend, you race full-time GT Daytona for Scuderia Corsa in the Tudor United Sports Car Championship. 458 GT3, I take it you've got some time behind the wheel of a 458 road car as well. Yeah, I mean, that's a completely different beast. That's mid-engine, you know, it's, uh, it's an awesome, awesome car to take to the track or go up on the twisty roads. But this is something, I mean, you really can use this every day. Uh, you know, it just starts with getting in. I mean, the seat's not incredibly low. It's got this beautiful, of course, Ferrari interior, the detail everywhere, the stitching, it's leather all over the place. And then out back, you know, you've got a proper trunk. I mean, it's, it's literally a hatchback, the seats flip down. Now you start to sense the value in $295,000. You know, before we put the seats down, you were like, eh, but now you look at the cargo space and you're like, oh yeah, it's on. Yeah, sign me up. So, um, this is kind of cool. Let's say you're cruising up Pacific Coast Highway, you're gonna go to the Concours with the wifey. On, her, on the passenger seat, she gets gear position, revs, and speed. And actually, if you change this to kilometers per hour, you could probably impress a lot more girls. Spoken like a true race car driver. <laughs> Seats are super comfortable, adjustable a million different ways. Um, you know, it's just, everything just works great too. There's no rattles, it's solid, it's seamless. The power steering's really easy. You've got the, the rev lights across the top of the steering wheel like a Formula One car. It is a pretty long nose, uh, but there's good reason for that. You've got a 6.3 liter normally aspirated V12 under here. Uh, and. It's actually kind of cool that when you open it up, you see engine. Well, something also really interesting about the FF is technically, yes, it's an all-wheel drive car, right? So it has a second gearbox mounted in front of the engine between the axles. That's the benefit of being able to move the engine so far back. So you have a mid-engine, front-engine car. You really appreciate the four-wheel drive and the lower gears. Um, just with 650 horsepower, a lot of torque, uh, it really, it really claws its way off the line. I mean, the 0 60 time is pretty impressive for 4,100 pounds. It's three point, I think 3.7 seconds. It's, uh, it's pretty badass. but let's go take it for a spin. So what do you like best about this so far? I just like the usability. I mean, I don't, I don't drive with any kind of paranoia, like, oh, I'm in an exotic car. It's comfortable. Everything's intuitive. Uh, there's no trickery to get the car started, to get it in gear, to get it in reverse. It's, it's like driving a luxury car. It just so happens that it's got 650 horsepower, you know, a beautiful V12 sound, um, and goes like hell. When you get in a Ferrari race car, a Ferrari GT race car, as a professional, as a competitor, at the track on a race weekend, it's all about the focus on lap time on qualifying and on winning races not so much maybe the emotion and the I'm just happy to be here and having fun but yeah. what carries over on the emotional side from say the experience in a Ferrari road car to a Ferrari GT race car or does it's it it's funny because when you're when you're in the Ferrari race car it's very much a race car it's raw it's uh you're wringing its neck just like you would anything else. There's something about a Ferrari road car where when I get in this thing, it's, you know, you don't want to scratch it. Everything is just so beautiful yeah. and luxurious. And the attention to detail uh, just in the interior, I mean, there's nothing else on the road like this. It's just, it's just so well done. Um, it almost feels so much more special, the road car experience. Uh, and, and I think it, I enjoy getting in the Ferrari road cars because it reminds me of the brand the Mystique, if you know what I mean. When I'm in the Ferrari race car, I'm just, it's, it's a machine and I'm trying to extract every ounce of performance I can, regardless of the brand affiliation. But when you get in a Ferrari road car, it's, uh, it, you can't deny it's special. Do you ever though, Townsend, get that feeling with the race car, maybe not on a competition weekend, but at a test? Do you ever climb out of the car when you know you've got some downtime and just look at the, the 458 GT3 and say, damn, that's a sick 
looking race car and it's a Ferrari, it's got the horse and I'm driving it. I mean, there's no question. You, you, it, it always sounds the best. It's the best sounding car. It's the best looking car. And frankly, if you look at all of the performance penalties that are handed to the Ferrari in terms of additional weight, smaller restrictor, it's easily the best car, period, from a, a baseline performance standpoint. Um, but I'll tell you what really makes the difference is the quality of the espresso on the race team. Uh, as an Italian race team, it's just a mandatory uh, minimum level of espresso quality I that think, I just can't find anywhere else in the dude, U.S. Dude, I think that was scene. the word even back in the worst, darkest days of Ferrari F1 before, that at least the espresso maker always oh, worked. Yeah. Car never worked. Coffee, top down. Oh, we, we, we've had some issues occasionally with the espresso machine, but if that goes down... Over. Forget it. We'll miss a practice session to make sure that that's running again. I'd tear up my contract if I were just out of there. 